In the solitude of the coastal lighthouse, where the wind whispered through the aged timbers and the steady sweep of the beacon pierced the night, Robert maintained his watch. As the guardian of the light, it was his responsibility to steer ships safely through the perilous waters surrounding the rugged rocks below. But tonight there was an unsettling atmosphere, a tangible tension carried in with the fog creeping from the sea. Robert had witnessed countless foggy nights during his tenure at the lighthouse, but this fog felt different. It clung to the cliffs like a heavy blanket, dense and suffocating, obscuring familiar landmarks and swallowing the horizon. He couldn't shake the feeling that this fog bore an ominous weight, a warning that transcended the ordinary. Down in the nearby village, nestled against the rocky shore, the townspeople went about their evening routines, oblivious to the growing apprehension of the lighthouse keeper. Robert had attempted to caution them earlier that day, gathering at the local tavern where fishermen and sailors congregated to share tales of the sea. However, his words had been met with dismissive laughs and sceptical glances. You fret too much, Robert, old George, the seasoned fisherman had chuckled dismissively. Fog's nothing new here. We'll navigate it as we always do. But Robert couldn't shake the feeling that something was different this time. The fog seemed thicker, more ominous. He had spent the afternoon checking and rechecking the lighthouse equipment, ensuring the light was functioning perfectly. Meanwhile, the villagers continued their evening, children playing by the shore, unaware of the potential danger. Robert documented the unusual weather conditions in his logbook, hoping his observations would be taken seriously. As the sun dipped below the horizon, his worry grew. He knew the sea could be unforgiving. The beam of the lighthouse cut through the fog, a lone beacon of hope in the encroaching darkness. Inside the tavern, the villagers remained oblivious, their laughter and stories a stark contrast to Robert's growing dread. He stood by the window, watching the fog roll in, praying that his warnings would not go unheeded for much longer. The fog enveloped the village, a silent, creeping threat that only Robert seemed to recognise. Determined, he resolved to stay vigilant through the night, hoping to protect his village from whatever lay hidden in the mist. Then faint at first, but steadily growing louder, the sound of the sea seemed to echo the growing tension in the air. The fog was thick, almost tangible, wrapping everything in a ghostly shroud, came the haunting sound of a ship's horn, a desperate plea for guidance through the fog. The horn's mournful cry was a stark reminder of the dangers lurking in the mist, a call for help that pierced the eerie silence. Robert's heart raced. He hurried to the balcony, scanning the mist-shrouded waters below. Through the swirling haze, he could feel the weight of responsibility pressing down on him. The lives of the sailors depended on his actions. He discerned the faint outline of a ship, a spectral silhouette perilously close to the treacherous rocks. Hard to starboard, the ship was dangerously close to the jagged coastline, and every second counted. Robert shouted urgently, his voice carrying through the still night air. He frantically signalled with the lighthouse lamp, its beam slicing through the fog like a knife. He hoped against hope that the crew would see the light and steer clear of the rocks, praying that the crew would see and heed his warning. But the fog masked everything, swallowing his signals like a hungry moor. The ship's horn blared again, closer now, its sound more desperate, more urgent accompanied by the frantic shouts of sailors struggling to navigate through the pea-soup fog. The crew was fighting against the elements, their voices filled with fear and determination. Robert's hands trembled as he adjusted the lighthouse lens, casting the beam in a desperate bid to penetrate the dense veil that separated safety from peril. The light was their only hope, a beacon in the darkness that could guide them to safety. He knew that every adjustment, every flicker of the light, could mean the difference between life and death. 
Robert's face was a mask of concentration, sweat beading on his brow. He could hear his own heartbeat, a steady drum in the silence. The weight of his duty was almost overwhelming, but he couldn't afford to falter. On the ship, the crew worked tirelessly, pulling ropes and adjusting sails, their movements synchronised in a dance of survival. They were a well-oiled machine, but even the best crew could be undone by the merciless sea. Finally, the lighthouse beam reached the ship, cutting through the fog like a lifeline. The crew's reaction was immediate. They adjusted their course, steering away from the deadly rocks. Relief washed over Robert as he saw the ship begin to turn. The ship navigated away from the rocks, the danger slowly receding. The fog began to lift, revealing the lighthouse standing tall and steadfast. Robert let out a breath. He didn't realise he was holding his heart still pounding, but filled with a sense of accomplishment. As the first light of dawn broke over the horizon, the sea calmed and the fog dissipated. The ship sailed safely away, a testament to the power of human determination and the guiding light of the lighthouse. Robert watched as the sun rose, a new day beginning, filled with hope and the promise of safety. Then a sickening crunch reverberated through the night, a sound that sent chills down Robert's spine. The ship had collided with the rocks, its hull splintering against the unyielding cliffs. For a moment, silence descended, broken only by the mournful cry of the wind. Heart pounding, Robert watched in horror as the ship began to disintegrate, swallowed by the churning waves. The cries of the crew mingled with the sound of splintering timber, a haunting requiem of tragedy echoing across the dark waters. In the days that ensued, more ships met similar fates, a grim procession of wrecks along the rocky coastline. Each time Robert sounded the alarm, each time he strained against the oppressive fog to guide ships to safety. But it seemed as though the mist possessed a malevolent intent of its own, a silent adversary that mocked his efforts and exacted its toll with chilling efficiency. Whispers spread through the village like wildfire, of phantom ships haunting the fog, of crews that vanished without a trace. Some spoke of curses and ancient legends, of spirits luring sailors to their doom. Yet Robert knew the truth lay in the natural world. A convergence of weather patterns and perilous geography made all the more lethal by the relentless fog. One stormy evening, as Robert stood on the balcony, the fog once again encroaching from the sea, he spotted a figure emerging, a lone sailor, battered and exhausted, yet alive. The sailor stumbled towards the lighthouse, his eyes wide with disbelief and gratitude. You saved me, the sailor gasped, collapsing at Robert's feet. I saw your light through the fog. It guided me home. Relief washed over Robert, a fleeting moment of triumph amidst the overwhelming sense of loss. The fog was thick, almost impenetrable, and the sea roared with a ferocity that mirrored his inner turmoil. Yet in that brief moment he felt a glimmer of hope, a sense of purpose that had been eluding him for so long. He assisted the sailor inside, warming him by the fire and offering sustenance. The cabin was a sanctuary a place where the cold and the fear could be kept at bay, if only for a little while. The sailor's hands trembled as he accepted the food, his eyes reflecting the horrors he had faced out on the open sea. As they sat together in the glow of the lanterns, the sailor recounted his harrowing tale of survival, of how he had almost lost hope until he spotted the lighthouse beam piercing the darkness. His voice wavered as he spoke of the monstrous waves and the relentless wind, but there was a spark of gratitude in his eyes, a silent acknowledgement of the beacon that had guided him to safety. In that moment Robert recognised the impact of his solitary vigil, the significance of his warnings, however futile they sometimes appeared. Each flash of the lighthouse was a lifeline, a signal to those lost in the storm that they were not alone. It was a reminder that even in the darkest of times there was a light to guide them home. 
He resolved to continue his watch to stand resolute against the fog that sought to claim lives. The weight of his responsibility was immense, but it was a burden he was willing to bear. He knew that his vigilance could mean the difference between life and death for those out at sea. For within the heart of the tempest, amid the raging winds and crashing waves, there shone a beacon of hope, a lighthouse keeper's unwavering determination to rescue those lost at sea, even as the fog descended thick and treacherous. The lighthouse was more than just a structure, it was a symbol of resilience, a testament to the human spirit's capacity to endure and to protect. Robert stood on the balcony, his eyes scanning the horizon, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. He was not just a keeper of the light, he was a guardian of hope, a beacon in the storm. In the heart of the mist-laden marshlands, Dr. Emily Dawson embarked on her research expedition, driven by a deep fascination for wetlands ecology. This particular marsh, veiled in perpetual fog and surrounded by gnarled cypress trees and tangled vines, held an allure that both captivated and unnerved her. The air was thick with moisture and the ground beneath her boots squelched with every step, a constant reminder of the marsh's ever-changing nature. Dr. Dawson had spent years studying various wetland ecosystems, but this marsh was unlike any she had encountered before. The dense fog that clung to the landscape seemed almost alive, shifting and swirling as if it had a mind of its own. The cypress trees with their twisted trunks and sprawling roots stood like ancient sentinels guarding the secrets of the marsh. Tangled vines draped from their branches, creating a labyrinthine canopy that filtered the sunlight into a dim, eerie glow. As she ventured deeper into the marsh, Dr. Dawson couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched. The rustling of leaves and the distant calls of unseen creatures added to the sense of mystery and foreboding. Yet despite the unease that gnawed at the edges of her mind, she was determined to uncover the hidden wonders of this enigmatic place. Her research focused on the unique flora and fauna that thrived in the marsh's challenging environment. She meticulously documented the various plant species, noting their adaptations to the waterlogged soil and low light conditions. The marsh was home to a myriad of creatures, from the smallest insects to elusive amphibians and reptiles. Each discovery added a piece to the puzzle of this complex ecosystem. Dr. Dawson's journey was not just a scientific endeavor, it was a personal quest to understand the delicate balance of life in the marshlands. She believed that by studying these often overlooked habitats, she could contribute to their conservation and protection. The marsh, with its haunting beauty and hidden dangers, was a testament to the resilience of nature and the interconnectedness of all living things. As the days turned into weeks, Dr. Dawson's initial apprehension gave way to a profound respect for the marsh and its inhabitants. She learned to navigate its treacherous terrain, finding solace in the rhythmic ebb and flow of the water and the chorus of life that surrounded her. The marsh, once a place of mystery and fear, became a sanctuary of knowledge and inspiration. In the heart of the mist-laden marshlands, Dr. Emily Dawson found not only the answers she sought, but also a deeper connection to the natural world. Her expedition was a reminder that even in the most inhospitable places, life finds a way to thrive, and there is always more to discover for those willing to look beyond the surface. Emily's exploration yielded unexpected discoveries, uneven mounds hinting at buried structures beneath the mud. Excited by the prospect of uncovering ancient artifacts, she meticulously mapped the area and began excavations with her assistant, Mark. 
Their efforts unearthed fragments of pottery, tools, and skeletal remains, a hidden burial ground of a forgotten civilization. As they delved deeper, strange occurrences plagued them. Tools vanished and reappeared, and paths they cleared were mysteriously overgrown overnight. One fog-bound morning, Emily uncovered a bone fragment, triggering a chilling realization. They had stumbled upon a sacred resting place. That night, as the fog thickened, a mournful wail echoed through the marsh. The air was heavy with an unsettling chill, and the dense mist seemed to swallow every sound, amplifying the eerie silence. Shadowy figures began to emerge from the fog, spectral forms of men and women, their faces contorted with anger and sorrow. These apparitions with their translucent bodies and hollow eyes seemed to float just above the ground, moving with an unnatural grace. Mark and Emily, gripped by fear, stood frozen, their hearts pounding in their chest. They had heard tales of the haunted marshlands, but nothing had prepared them for this chilling encounter. As the spirits drew closer, Mark and Emily could see the details of their tattered clothing, remnants of a bygone era. The spirits' eyes, though empty, seemed to bore into their souls, conveying a deep sense of anguish and despair. The couple tried to communicate their voices, trembling as they pleaded for understanding. Who are you? What do you want? Emily's voice was barely a whisper, carried away by the cold breeze. Mark, trying to muster courage, asked, How can we help you find peace? But the apparitions remained relentless, their presence charged with an eerie luminosity that seemed to pulse with every step they took. The spirit's silence was deafening, a stark contrast to the mournful wail that had first alerted Mark and Emily to their presence. It was as if the spirits were trapped in a perpetual state of torment, unable to find the release they so desperately sought. The fog continued to thicken, wrapping around Mark and Emily like a suffocating shroud. The couple could feel the temperature drop, their breath visible in the cold night air. They clung to each other, seeking comfort in their shared fear. The marsh, once a place of natural beauty, had transformed into a nightmarish landscape where the boundary between the living and the dead seemed to blur. In a desperate attempt to reach out, Emily extended her hand towards one of the spirits, her fingers trembling. The spirit paused, its hollow eyes locking onto hers. For a brief moment, Emily felt a connection, a flicker of understanding, but just as quickly the spirit recoiled, its form dissolving into the mist. The other apparitions followed suit, their spectral bodies dissipating into the fog, leaving Mark and Emily alone once more. The couple stood in stunned silence, the weight of the encounter pressing down on them. They knew they had witnessed something extraordinary, something that defied explanation. As the fog began to lift, revealing the marshland in the pale light of dawn, Mark and Emily made a silent vow to uncover the truth behind the spirit's sorrow. They would return to the marsh, armed with knowledge and determination to help the restless souls find the peace they so desperately needed. Hours passed in terror, until suddenly the spirits began to fade as swiftly as they had appeared. The fog lifted, leaving the marsh in silence once more. Haunted by the encounter, Emily and Mark departed with a newfound respect, realizing some mysteries were better left undisturbed. They carried with them a solemn lesson, that ancient spirits, disturbed from their eternal slumber, exact a toll for those who dare to trespass upon their sacred domain. As they walked through the misty marshland, the fog swirling around their feet, the weight of their experience pressed heavily upon their shoulders. The eerie landscape seemed to whisper secrets of the past, tales of those who had come before and faced the wrath of the spirits. Emily glanced at Mark, her eyes reflecting the unease that had settled in her heart. Mark, 
usually so confident and unshakable, now appeared deeply contemplative, his mind replaying the events that had unfolded. Their journey had begun as a simple exploration, a curiosity-driven adventure into the unknown. They had heard rumors of the marshland's haunted reputation, stories passed down through generations about the spirits that guarded the ancient grounds. Skeptical yet intrigued, they had ventured forth, armed with nothing but their courage and a sense of wonder. Little did they know they were about to uncover a truth far more profound than any legend. The encounter had been sudden and terrifying. The air had grown cold and an unnatural silence had enveloped them. Shadows moved in the periphery of their vision and whispers barely audible seemed to emanate from the very ground beneath their feet. It was then that they saw it, a spectral figure, ethereal and haunting, emerging from the fog. The spirit's eyes, hollow and sorrowful, bore into their souls, conveying a message of warning and despair. In that moment, Emily and Mark understood the gravity of their intrusion. They had crossed a boundary, disturbed a sacred space, and now they were paying the price. The spirit's presence was a reminder of the ancient pact between the living and the dead, a pact that demanded respect and reverence. As the figure faded back into the mist, they felt a profound sense of remorse and a deep-seated fear of the unknown. Their departure from the marshland was marked by a silence that spoke volumes. The lesson they had learned was etched into their very beings. A reminder that some mysteries are not meant to be solved, some places not meant to be explored. The spirits of the marshland had made their point clear. Disturbing the peace of the ancient dead comes with consequences, and those who dare to trespass must be prepared to face them. As they walked away, the fog gradually lifted, revealing the path ahead. Emily and Mark knew that they would never forget this experience. It had changed them, instilled in them a respect for the unknown and a caution for the unseen forces that dwell in the shadows. The marshland, with its eerie beauty and haunting presence, had left an indelible mark on their souls, a solemn lesson that would stay with them forever.